<laughs> Hello all, we have a um, broken GTX 1070 by Zotac, custom fans. Um, this particular card has memory corruption, and I, I, uh, in this video I wanted to go over some of the signs of memory corruption, especially on, um, in this case, GTX 1000 series cards, um, that, and of course sometimes GDDR5 cards. Anyways, let's, uh, let's try to turn it on and see what happens. Okay, um, one of the signs that you have memory corruption on a GTX 1000 series card is what you find that when you, you know, when you run the card, it looks like it's perfectly good, right? It has, uh, two spinning, spa um, two spinning fans, right? It seems to more or less act like it's normal, except that it won't actually boot. Oh, well, not yet at least. What happens is that after 30 seconds, a minute, it'll finally eventually boot. If you pay attention to, oh jeez, you can't see it, um, if you look at the orange light on the back, you'll see the monitor's off. Right? In a few moments, you'll hear a beep, and then, yep, there we go, and then the monitor turns on. And what you see is that the backlight turns on. But there's no image on the screen. So, um, this is a telltale sign of memory corruption. Let me just put this back down. Um, there's this program called Mats and Mods that lets you know which uh, memory module is corrupt. Um, I've actually already ran it in this case, so we're going to go over the reports that I have on my USB flash drive, and it's going to tell us which memory mo module is corrupt. Okay, so um, if we go over our reports, we'll find that if we look over at the um, corrupted uh, modules, we'll find that, okay, there being an 8 gigabyte card, there are 8 modules, of course. We'll see that the uh, module B1 is, uh, it has write errors. It's also, the, it's the only faulty module. Um, the thing to notice is that the failing bits, okay, on a memory module for B1, the, the bits available range from um, 32 to 63, I think. And um, unfortunately, in this case, we have partial memory errors. And so we suspect that the actual memory module itself is at fault. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it off the card and we're going to test it one more time and see what happens. Okay, so back to our Zotac card. So um, I forgot to mention earlier that the program you use to determine which module is faulty can actually uh, be found on the site called vlab.su. It's uh, actually all in Russian, well, mostly in Russian. I can't give you an exact link because I don't remember exactly which thread, but if you go to that site, vlab.su, you know, use Google Translate, and you use the search function, you should be able to find a uh, working upload of the program. Um, it's called MATS, M-A-T-S. If you just search that, you should, with a bit of time, find it. Now, anyways, we mentioned, you saw in the report that the faulty module was module B1. So one of the things that you need to know when you want to swap memory is which module that refers to. So the way it works on, at, at the very least, the GTX 1070 is that you have to pay attention to the, co the um, upper left corner of the GPU. Now, you might think in this case that the upper left corner is over here. Um, and that, that's actually wrong. The corner I'm talking about is this, because you notice the GPU is actually sideways, so I'm gonna, hold on, maybe you can read it, maybe you can't, um, no yeah, you can't. So basically you turn it, once you have it the correct way around, this is the upper le left corner, it has that uh, arrow there, and then you start from the bottom right corner and you count counterclockwise in this order. A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0, D1, D0. For the uh, 1080 Ti and cards with 12 gigabytes, it extends to um, through E1, E0, and F1, F0. But of course, this doesn't have it. So, so we remember remember that the faulty module was B1. So if we, hmm, uh, it's kind of dark. I gotta say, it's a pretty crap. Sorry, crap ca camera. But so remember, faulty module is B1. So our, so it must be. Let's see, A1, A0. B1. So if we take this module out, this is the suspected faulty module as determined by testing. So in theory, if we take this off and we then run it without the module, we should get errors in the exact same place. And then all we have to do is put it back and it should, in theory, work, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so as you can see, I've taken off the offending memory module. In theory, if this is this was actually our faulty module, then when we put the uh, card back in and run our memory test, we should get errors on at the exact same module, which was B1. So um, I'm going to put this cooler back together, uh, just a heat sink at least, and then we'll go run a memory test and we'll see if I was correct. 
Okay, so uh, as you can see, we now have a new report. The memory test actually ran. Uh, you notice the report's much bigger, 91 kilobytes, than, as opposed to, um, I think it was 42, 43 before. So if we open the report, we'll see that, okay, we have, again, mod er memory errors on uh, module B1, which is the one that we took off. That's good. We also notice that the failing bits is now 32 to 63. So the entirety of the uh, memory module is um, giving errors, and that's that's a great thing because it's 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 not um, the important thing. To remember is that it's not even connected. So that's you know that, that's a really good sign. So it seems like okay. I'll just um, what I'll do is I'll you know I'll uh, clear the solder from the uh, memory pad the solder pads under the memory module. I'll install a new one, and hopefully we'll hopefully it'll work without issue. Okay. So um, as you as you might be able to see, I've reinstalled the memory module is uh, not, not reinstalled I mean I've got I've taken a uh, working one from a broken card and let's see if the card powers on and displays an image so we have a beep and we have picture there we go as you can see my BIOS is loaded Everything is good now. So I'm gonna put the cooler back on and then we're gonna see if it's stable. We're gonna run the memory test one more time and then we're gonna try some games and whatever just to see if it's stable. Okay, so is, as you remember, we changed the memory module. Um, we wanna check that the thing actually is fault free. Sometimes what happens is um, you can change the memory module and as long as it has few enough faults, it'll still boot and it still kind of function correctly. We want to make sure to a certainty that it is actually all correct. So we'll just run the test one more time and hopefully it'll give us a big green pass and we'll go check the report and it'll say zero errors. Once that's done, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll stress test the game for, you know, an hour or whatever, two hours. And if that's good, we'll assume that the card is perfectly working. So, okay, as you can see, the memory test is running. That's why we have all those colors on the screen. So one of the things you want to do is when you're running this memory test, you don't want to touch anything on the keyboard. It can screw um, with the test. So it'll finish in a moment. Once it turns green, it should um, it'll, it'll, it'll be done pretty soon. So we'll get a big green pass if every, everything works well. There we go. We have a pass. And the card is perfectly working, as you can see. The computer shut off. So now we'll just boot into Windows and we'll run a game and we'll, we'll just see if it's stable. So I have the card. I've had the card running for about ten minutes. Um, I'm just gonna prematurely make this video. I'm not gonna wait a couple hours. So, if you look at the, uh, so the game's been running for about ten minutes. The card's pretty much heat soaked. So we can see that it levels off at 70, 70 degrees Celsius. We can also see that the TDP figure, power consumption, is more or less what we expect. You know, we expect a GTX 1070 to consume roughly 150 watts. It's it's running at about 100% TDP, which is what you want. The um, if we look at the G, uh, the temperature, that's good. The fan speed's good. RPM's good. The thing that's a, maybe slightly off um, is the GPU clock. It's a little bit low. You know, some of the G, the uh, EVGA, or at least the nicer GTX 1070s I get, these sometimes run you know 1900 plus, and uh, you know, 1850 megahertz is definitely kind of low. Um, but it's not really something we're concerned about. It's you know, it's it's technically functional. It's still higher than the it's still within range, just the lower end. And much more importantly, you see there's no artifacting, right? It's not unstable, everything is just smooth. So the thing pretty much works as you expect it to.